Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX, and I led the team on a new report which we think is covering what a very, is now a very important subject. Uh, it's called Mild Hybrid 48 Volt Vehicles 2016 to 2031. Yes, you have to look at 15 years to understand this one. Uh, and what it's talking about is um, how um, conventional vehicles with internal combustion engines doing nearly all the work can, contrary to what was thought only fairly recently, it, they can meet the really tough emissions laws uh, coming up in 2025 and 2030. So let's go into that because it's an exciting story. It leads us to a new form of electric vehicle. ID TechX is in these different subjects which deliberately overlap and are all important for electric vehicles. Uh, and we cover automotive and uh, electric vehicles as a subject in its own right as well. And we offer subscriptions, research reports, and large events around the world and so on. So we are a service business with over 10 people with PhDs traveling their lives away. What have we found out? Well, there is this year, uh, I think for the first time, something near a consensus uh, that something not yet in volume production comes into volume series production next year uh, will make a major contribution to meeting the plan's tighter emissions regulations under a new test regime that is much more realistic and they're tougher in every respect. Um, and that, that means that this new thing, the 48 volt mild hybrid modification to a traditional powertrain, in particularly the medium and large cars, um, is going to be a very big business. It's the lowest cost way of meeting those emissions. Of course, we will be able to meet those emissions with pure electric vehicles. They have no emission at point of use. Of course, we'll be able to meet those um, regulations with so-called full hybrids, strong hybrids. Uh, and yes, there's a tremendous growth in demand from a small figure uh, for plug-in hybrids now because they now have a very good range and they're a good transition product to pure electric. And uh, we're not saying that any of that is going to be affected. However, uh, the plug-ins that do not, uh, the, the sorry, the strong hybrids that do not plug in um, will be impacted by this, not just traditional powertrains, um, because of the cost advantage. That's what it's looking like at the moment. And the interesting thing is that they initially, with this new um, technique of adding certain devices, which I'll go into, three key devices and what you do with them, um, these 48-volt uh, mild hybrid powertrains um, can transition with improved devices to having at least four different pure electric modes. That makes them electric vehicles. They are, by definition, vehicles that are electrically driven for some of the time, some or all of the time, in this case, some of the time. Not a lot of the time, but in quite different modes. They can give you silent takeoff in their advanced form, so you can leave the house silently no pollution, pure electric, engine off. You can park it similarly, and you can creep in traffic similarly, just electric. And you can, when you're up to speed, for a while, you can, on a flat terrain, um, just keep your speed constant by topping up with a bit of energy and in the, in the engine off. It's called sailing, active coasting. So four different modes of pure electric. It's an electric vehicle. Dear me, suddenly a traditional vehicle can become electric, and it's at a fraction of the cost. We'll come to that in a minute. Audi working on it. Look at them. Volkswagen, their um, same group, uh, is working independently in a big way on it. And so is Hyundai in Japan. And so are nearly all the manufacturers that do have um, traditional powertrains and can't convert or don't want to convert to the great expense of uh, fully electric and fully hybrid and the time taken for it, uh, they have to recognize they can't do it overnight anyway. 
And those different manufacturers, uh, they are working towards this because otherwise they're headed for a brick wall in not, going, in not meeting regulations, at least for, for example, C and D, the medium and large cars, uh, commercial vans, and um, it seems to be true with trucks as well. Uh, less obvious with buses because a lot of those are going pure electric, but um, that's all influenced by purchasing behavior and so on because they're not bought by individuals. Um, so what is it? Well, a, a car normally, a car or a van is a 12 volt system with a traditional uh, lead acid battery. Now it's going to add, add a 48 volt battery. In the case of trucks and buses, 24 volts and you add that battery. And moving to the other slide, uh, which you can look at at your leisure, uh, this is showing the missing link, and that's going to be a winner. The loser will be the 12-volt mild hybrids that exist at the moment. And as I said, to some extent, the losers will be um, full hybrids that do not plug in. But mainly, this is replacing conventional internal combustion engines, which will be losers over the coming 10 to 15 years because the law will hit them. And the way you make these, uh, I won't go through the full detail in front of you, but basically you downsize your internal combustion engine, maybe up to 70%. You have a two-way DC-DC inverter so that you can use that a, a device on it, which has various names, but um, in its advanced form, it's an integrated starter generator or a boost recuperation machine, different jargon. But basically, it's a motor generator of a sophisticated type that works in many different modes, and it can charge the 48 volt or the 12 volt battery as required. The first ones are going to be lithium ion batteries, I think, probably throughout, and when these come out next year. Uh, but there will be a place for the advanced lead acid if they're properly marketed for this task. And eventually, whatever way it's made, the 48 battery will do everything and they'll phase out the 12 volt one. But that may take 10 years. There are different views on that. Some people say five years. We shall see. And it's not just cars. There you are. I've said it already. This is a van and that's an example of it in a van. And different manufacturers have different approaches. Look at the bottom of the page, and you'll see that most of them, though, are working on this. Even BMW, which has recently said, the chief technical officer said, we are prioritizing full hybrids that plug in and pure electric. Well, yes, they are. But he has also been at pains to say that for the rest, they're working very hard on 48 volt mild hybrids, because that's the escape route for the ones that have not been converted in time. But obviously, people who only do pure electric vehicles are not interested in this. They're the people on the right. This is our forecast. You see the yellow there for a massive new market coming in for these 48 volt mild hybrids and for the people supplying the key things, which is not just uh, that DC DC uh, reversible converter, it's not just downsized engines, it's not just the 48 volt batteries. Uh, and the uh, rotating device, the boost conversion machine, whatever it's called. Um, it is more than that because you're using this with four times as much current available and four times as much en electricity being stored. You're using all that to accept inputs from the new active suspension and the new propeller in the exhaust pipe and the new harvesting with thermoelectrics and whatever succeeds. There are many forms of internal regeneration. Instead of producing heat, um, you produce electricity here, there, and everywhere. Uh, but they're also capable of supplying lots of different things that weren't electric. So you now have electric superchargers that work well from zero. You, you're going to have electric air conditioning, electric power steering, electric everything, and forget the pneumatics, the hydraulics, and the mechanical links. Uh, they will be reducing in number as you electrify more and more. So there are big opportunities for people who make any of those things that are coming in. Uh, and the vehicles themselves. That finishes my presentation. This is the report. I hope you find it useful. Do contact us if you wish to find more. Thank you for listening.